What's going on guys? I want to do a quick overview of my surface grinder conversion from a stone wheel to a 1x72 inch belt. And I try to keep this as basic and as simple as possible and I think I succeeded there. I don't think I could have got much more simple with this. And I try not to get too crazy on cost either. Uh, the most expensive part of this was the wheels. Uh, specifically this one here uh, I got from Contact Rubber Corporation and uh, that sent me back about a hundred and ninety to two hundred dollars uh, when it was all said and done and uh, I may have been able to get a cheaper wheel elsewhere uh, but I know these guys do good work and uh, they came highly reviewed from a few other makers so I decided to uh, go ahead and get a quality wheel and uh, one that I knew uh, would be fit for the job that I'm doing. So uh, what I have here, it's a 90 durometer, one inch wide serrated contact wheel. Uh, I had the bore set at an inch and a quarter uh, so that it would fit right over my existing hubs uh, for my stone wheels. And uh, the webbing here I think I uh, left it about half an inch in the middle so it's about half an inch thick or pretty much the same dimensions as a typical grinding wheel uh, that I would already have. Uh, you can see this has an inch and a quarter bore in the middle and uh, about a half inch thickness. And uh, if I didn't mention the diameter on this is six inches. I uh, didn't really need it to be uh, too much wider than that or uh, really too narrow. Uh, I know a lot of guys use six inch wheels so uh, I decided to go ahead and uh, do that for my machine as well. Uh, as for the rest of the assembly, uh, it's made from inch and a half square tube. Uh, the upright I made from 3 16 thick wall. And uh, I think the tracking arm is only one inch, one eighth inch thick. Uh, I wanted something that I was sure would be uh, nice and solid and stable. I uh, probably could have got away with eighth inch all around, uh, but I went ahead and got some 3 16 uh, for a little bit of extra mass and uh, rigidity there and uh, I just went ahead and mounted that uh, to an existing piece already on my machine uh, this is what the dust shroud uh, originally mounted to uh, I got that sitting down on the floor there and uh, it already had some bolt holes in it so I just used those and mounted the upright directly to that uh, with some 3 8 inch bolts uh, the tracking arm, uh, pretty basic, as well as the tracking assembly. Uh, I borrowed the design from the no-weld grinder sander, uh, which is basically just another short piece of square tube uh, that the wheel mounts onto and uh, pivots on some brackets. Uh, got it notched out there to go back and forth with the tracking bolt or uh, the tracking knob. And uh, for that I just used a 3 8 eye bolt. Uh, it's cheap and it works. And uh, that wheel I actually got off of eBay. I think it was about $35, $40. So a little bit cheaper than the Beaumont wheel. Uh, maybe not quite as nice, uh, but it should get the job done uh, just about as well. Uh, a little bit wider than it needs to be maybe, uh, but that's the dimensions they come in. And uh, for the belts, I'm just splitting some 2x72 down. Uh, I made a belt splitter, which I uh, recently posted a video on if you guys are interested in making one for yourself. And uh, the tension's just done with a medium duty spring. Uh, I forget what the weight on this is, maybe 30, 40 pounds. Uh, hooked up to an eye bolt on the upright and just bolted to the tracking arm on the end there. And as far as dimensions, lengths, and all that, uh, I'm really not even sure what they are. Uh, just kind of eyeballed everything and uh, made it up as I went along. And uh, it came out working pretty well. Uh, track's pretty straight. Uh, stays nice and uh, even. And uh, seems to work pretty well. Uh, the only issue that I'm really having, and I'm not sure that it's uh, really anything related to uh, this new assembly here, 
but I'm getting a little bit of a chatter pattern on the pieces that I grind. And uh, you can kind of see that as the light reflects. Uh, kind of a stepped or a scalloped pattern there. And uh, before this, I was getting a little bit of a chatter pattern or some kind of uh, grinding pattern from my stone wheels. Uh, that was actually one of the reasons I converted to belts to see if maybe I can make that go away. You can see what I'm talking about there on this knife blade. So uh, I'm still kind of tracing that down. Uh, I was hoping it'd go away with this. Unfortunately, it didn't. So uh, if anybody has any ideas, uh, I'm really not sure what to look at at this point. Uh, I know I've put a dial indicator on my spindle and uh, the needle doesn't move at all even when it's running. Uh, if I pull on it real hard I only get about a thousandth to one and a half thousandths of deflection uh, which I don't think is too much uh, for a surface grinder. And uh, what I'm thinking is I'm getting some vibration or uh, some unevenness somewhere else. So uh, if anybody has any experience or some solutions to look at, uh, I'd really appreciate if you left some comments below. But uh, other than that, I just wanted to show you guys my conversion. Uh, maybe give you guys some ideas uh, if you were thinking about doing one for yourself. Uh, I think that's about as simple as it can get. And uh, if I could just get that chatter pattern worked out, uh, it'd be a pretty good conversion. So uh, that's it, guys. Any questions, post them below. Uh, again, any ideas on how to improve my finish there? Uh, I'd appreciate some comments or some ideas. Uh, other than that, have a good one.